Hi, I'm Brandon Brown. I'm the transition expert with Lifecycle Transitions. Today is one of our guests that has contacted Lifecycle because she's having some issues with her home. She has a newborn child that she's trying to get home that has recently been diagnosed with uh, COVID and she's trying to get treatment and get her daughter back home. But unfortunately, there are a number of things in the home that we need to address first. So come with me and let's see what we can do. This is the home? Yes, this is my home. All right, this is how about you show me around? Okay, so this is the living room. Mm -hmm. This is the dining area. Yep. This is the kitchen. Okay. Any, any fruit flies or? No, no flies, nothing like that. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at the fridge. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, we definitely got to put some love in here, huh? Yeah. And I normally put the food here. I put all the baby stuff here. Um, okay. Slash pots and pans. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any designated areas. <laughs> okay, and this is where you keep the bottles? Oh, no. That's where I clean the bottles. I normally um, put them up here once they clean. Mm -hmm. All right. And you boil them to sanitize them? Yeah. Okay, good. Right. Let's keep going. I'll let you lead the way. Yeah, sure. This is, um, sorry. This is my bedroom. I share this with my 10 month old. Okay. Um, this is, yeah, this is my bedroom. Alright, so we want to get those clothes hung up, right? Yeah. Let's get, some, you know, get the clothes off the floors, put the paperwork away. Do you have like a little storage here? Is that storage? Or um, what? That's where I use to put the baby's clothes, um, like the shirts and stuff. I don't really have a place to put things. Perfect. Let's just keep going. Yeah. This is the my other daughter's room. So this is the other one? Yes, yeah, this is a make sure, but I took the baby out of this room for the two oldest ones. Okay. Uh, one sits in the living room, one sleeps in here. Alright. And how old are they? Um, 14 and 12. Okay. Alright, so we want to get the clothes up in here as well, get some of these items out of here that maybe need to be discarded and mm -hmm. you know, obviously do a, a real thorough cleaning make this room functional so that they can play in here and have yeah. some fun you know little girl power in here yeah right? I mean, little, oh. little. this is the bathroom okay. this is the kitchen this is the mostly the part that i keep and clean the most okay not bad put a little bit of love and care in this area huh? yeah Okay, so we know what the other areas that we need to focus on. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Life cycle sort of encompasses and embodies that, that, that nature of how we adjust to change. Life cycle clients range from the son or daughter taking care of the affairs for their mom or dad, from a recent retiree, anticipating getting their house ready for sale and all the hassles and hurdles that they're going to have to take a home that's been in a family for 30, 40 years, or to a client that maybe struggled with hoarding, you know, and, and don't quite know who to call or how to call uh, to get help. Is we're the family when the family isn't there. Whether it's just too much of a daunting task for your loved ones or yourself to handle, you contact us. We answer the call and they're definitely the solution for you. See what needs to get done. I know exactly what we're you're looking to do. And let's put this place back together. Let's pack, let's sort, let's organize, let's discard some things that need to be discarded. Then let's do a deep cleaning. Yeah. Let's clean the walls, the floors, the baseboard, refrigerators, the appliances. Let's get some of those food items uh, put away. Let's come up with a system that's sustainable. I mean, it's one thing to do this, but we want to do it intentionally with a mindset that allows this to be functional maintained so that there's a sustainability factor that once it's done you can maintain it you can do the light and heavy chores the routine 
uh, maintenance so that it stays this way. Otherwise, it's all for not. We don't want to do it the way we would do it. Yeah. We don't want to put things in places that you will never keep it there or yeah. you're going to rearrange it because by doing that, it makes this whole process a waste of time. Yeah. Um, you're not going to go through the extra mile, the extra measure to do that. So we want to avoid doing anything just because it looks good. Yeah. If it's really not going to make good on a promise to keep you moving in the right direction. We've done this hundreds and hundreds of times. We can help you here. All right? Yeah. You excited? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Let's turn this around. Yay. All right. Let's go. Hi, I'm Brandon Brown. I'm the transition expert with Life Cycle Transitions. Today's guest is Asia. Asia. Hi. Thank you for being a part of the, today's show. You reached out to Life Cycle recently and you wanted to discuss your situation. What's what's going on? Well, right now I'm battling um, depression and PTSD, hmm. constantly in and out the hospital, and that um, strained a lot on my depression. I called because I, I just need help. I didn't know really where to start. I hmm. was overwhelmed, so I just reached out to someone. When did the, the depression and the PTSD start? I started about 10 months ago when I had my daughter, started then. Um, Postpartum? Yeah. Okay, when, when did you start noticing some changes? I, I started noticing them like right when I came home from the hospital. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't want to do nothing. <laughs> Everything that I did love to do, I, I wasn't finding interest in any of the things I wanted to do oh. anymore. So that's when I knew I was in a bad mood. Is this your first child? Um, no, she's my third child. Okay. Have you had any issues with postpartum with the other pregnancies? No, I haven't. Uh, so it's fairly new to me and I didn't really know um, I was until I received help. Who are you talking to? Did someone tell you that this is postpartum? Yeah, yeah. yeah someone did the doctors when we go through a six-week mm -hmm. checkup mm -hmm. and they asked me a series of questions and they score your questions and they said that mine was like really off of the chart. And that's when I knew. What were you like before you experienced those part? What was the average day like with you and the other two? We were always out having mm -hmm. fun. There was nothing that we really couldn't do. So mm -hmm. we was very adventurous a family. So right. so you're very active when you did a lot of social events, a lot of activities and yeah. recreation. Yeah. How old are your kids? My oldest is 14, my youngest is um, 10 months, and then my middle child is 12. Are they girls, boys? Three girls, girls. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And did they help out early on? Not really. They just started to help me out when they noticed that I wasn't myself anymore. Okay. And how do you think this ordeal affected them? Did you see any changes with them? Yeah, I did. I seen that they was taking after me and they didn't want to do nothing as well. Huh. So, like, my mood really impacted them as, as children. Where you kind of like stand off, it's sort of isolated from them. Yeah, I isolated from them. My main priority was the baby, and that took a toll on the children as well. Hmm. And your baby now is how many months now? She's 10 months. She's 10 months. Do you think you, with the postpartum, you think it was hard for you to, to bond with her at times, like to have that connection that you were used to before the other ones? No, I just felt like I couldn't really bond more with the older children more than her. So you were all about her yeah. and less about the others as much as you were before. Yeah. What was the straw that broke the camel's back? Um, the straw that broke the camel's back when, um, when she started being admitted into the hospital. What happened? She just uh, doesn't gain weight. She's very small for her age. Yeah. So that's what really made me say, I have to work on myself so I can work towards my, my daughter and her health. Huh. Is she still at the hospital now? Or? Yeah, she's still at the hospital. Why is she still there? She's still there because she's um, under investigation. Um, she's doing a lot of very slick testing, genetic testing, and all of the stuff that mm -hmm. is hard for us to get outpatient. Mm -hmm. Has she been affected by COVID or anything? Um, yeah, she was COVID positive, but um, she is getting better. Uh, better when COVID, I didn't think it was going to be her or mm -hmm. my kids, but it can happen to anyone. Was she the only one in the home that had COVID? Yeah, she's the only one in the home that has COVID. How, how do you think that happened? Well, because I did work. So she would go to family houses or my mom or my sister's house and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Wasn't noticing any other symptoms with her with the 
I, I, you know, I didn't know any of the symptoms. She didn't get them until we went to her appointment one day. And that's when it all spiked out. But that's the scary part. Most of the symptoms are things that most of us have to verbalize. Uh, fever, taste, temperatures, coughing. But when you're that little, you don't really see a lot of those yeah, symptoms. Yeah, and I didn't, so. <laughs> so. you're very blessed that you were able to catch it obviously get her treatment. How long has she been in the hospital now? Um, she's been in the hospital three weeks now. Three weeks. And how is she doing? Um, she is way better. She's starting to be herself now. Um, she's starting to eat now because of the big takeaway in her eating and mm -hmm. things like that. So she's doing a little bit better. She's becoming herself now. What are the doctors expecting at this point? They're just expecting um, her to get back on routine. And that's like reteaching her basic things like eating and, you know, things like that. Okay. So what did you do for work? You said you were working up until some point. Yeah, I work at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh -huh. I'm a crew member. Uh -huh. Yeah. The, the postpartum or was it some other things that made you decide you would take, take a leave of absence from work? What made you pause here? The depression what? and the fact that um, my daughter is in the hospital and I feel like she needs my attention 100%. And you say how long has it been? Like, Three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah, that she's been in the hospital. Okay. When do you hope to go back? Um, they don't really have a, a day yet. Um, hopefully sometime this week she can come home. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the place. Yeah. You've been here... 10 months now. Yeah. Would you say that it's gotten to this point maybe four months ago, three months ago? About like four months ago. In that time period, you know, what was the first area of the home you think you began to neglect? I began to neglect the living room first. Mm -hmm. So we normally will enjoy our days Fine. and nobody now comes into here because I, I don't feel like cleaning. I don't feel like doing anything. How would you rate your you know, PTSD, the depression now versus when it was before? Or do you think that it's, it's getting better? And if it is getting better, what do you think is the attributing factor to making you feel like you are more encouraged now? I feel like it's getting better. I'm not 100% there, but what made me um, get there was counseling. I'm doing counseling. Good. Um, I have some <clears throat> mentors that call me every week to talk to me to mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, I'm meeting all my goals and I'm actually doing what I say I'm doing. Awesome. So that was the big motivator was there to have a support team. You know, our focus at Life Cycle is to build awareness, education, but also to connect resources. Postpartum is a big deal. So it's something that millions of people, millions of women are going through every year, every day. A lot of times it's undiagnosed because they just don't really understand what it is. They think they do, much like most mental health issues. They're not educated on really knowing why they feel the way they feel. They just figure it's, it's going to pass. But I commend you for talking to people, getting a counselor, maybe speaking with other individuals that may have went through pregnancies and realized they're probably going through postpartum. Yeah. Because there's so much that needs to go into it. Being a very active person like you were, being more engaged with your kids, isn't like you not to do those things. And when you started to see that decline and start seeing the neglect of yourself, of of the place that inadvertently at some point affected them, you want to curtail it, you want to reverse it, you want to do everything in your power to get back your footing, get back on track, uh, regain control of your life, and, and make sure that the kids and everyone around are okay. Uh, at this point, what do you think it it would mean to you to get this place back together? I think it would mean a lot to me because it would help with the process of my healing, mm -hmm. so my depression and all of that. I don't have to walk around here because I don't feel like it would make me more motivated. Like, you know, it's, I got it back clean and back to myself and mm -hmm. I want to keep it that way. Right. That's the step of, of healing. Right. Would you consider yourself a hoarder? Do you think you're attached to things or do you think in this case it was more or less just, look, I was just going through a funk? I just feel like it's both. Because okay. um, a lot of things are sentimental to me from my kids. Yeah. And I don't want to let it go, or mm -hmm. I then got it from a family member that's no longer here, or right. just don't like to throw nothing away, even if it doesn't have any sentimental value. I just yeah, don't like to hard. throw nothing yeah. away. Well, you have three kids, right? Yeah. And usually, what you hope for is that the, the hand me downs can be useful for the other kids. Uh, in your case, there are a lot of women, a lot of parents that are in that same situation where, or circumstance where they're saying, 
we can't possibly get rid of this, not yet. Let's hold on to it. Let's keep it. So there's some logical decisions within that realm that maybe you're making, but then there may be some irrational decisions that you're also making that you may not be aware of. What do you think you're going to have the hardest time possibly parting ways with? What my baby with the baby's clothes, I mean, her preemie clothes, because she would wear very, very well. Mm-hmm. Um, all her little stuff. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just like to hold on to. So when do you think she's going to likely be discharged? They're investigating, they're doing their research, tests, and so on and so forth. Where are you thinking it's going to be a week, two weeks? I'm more thinking like a week. A week? So what would it mean for you to have this place back together before she comes home? That would be great. I want her to come back to a nice, clean, sanitized home. Mm-hmm. Not something that she has to um, find her way through the house, you know, because she's very active. She mm-hmm. likes to fall around, likes to get into things and kids and put a lot of things in their mouth. Right. I just don't want it to be a choking hazard for her right. being in here knowing that it's like this. Right. You know, so what about the other ones, the other little ones? They will like it too. Right. Whatever I, I do, they will like it. I have to lead by example. Right. So this is what I'm doing. I'm leading by example. Like This is how I need to be. This is how I need you to be. Mm-hmm. And this is to be clean. As the kids verbalize to you, Mom, this is an issue. It's, it's hard for kids to, to communicate their feelings in a lot of cases. Have you seen them verbally or not verbally express how they feel about the living conditions? Maybe even just by sitting in certain ways or moving things to the side? Yeah, I would hear them say little comments like, I can never find nothing in here. It's uh, so junky. Right. Uh, Mom, when are you going to clean up? <laughs> and I'm like, I- I'm going to clean up today. Right. And they're like, but Mom, you said that last week. Right. And I'm like, okay, but I am today. Right. And I never get done. Were you ever close to telling them, like, look, Mommy's not feeling well right now. She's going through something. Yeah, I tell my oldest ones that, yeah, I do. But they know it as well. Mm-hmm. Um from me isolating myself from them. Mm. So they, they already knew something was wrong with me. Did they come in? Did they try to hug you and say, no. I know you're not feeling good right now? They be like, Mom, you need anything? Um, I know you don't feel like giving up right now, but I, you have to eat something, you have to drink something, and I cook you something. They would bring me meals inside my room while I was isolated. And I like that gesture that they, they mm. noticed that I was in that state of mind. That must have made you feel even worse, right? Yeah. It made you feel like, you know, you're supposed to be there championing them, encouraging them, hearing the kids out doing it. Yeah. And the opposite for you, Mom. There's nothing you need to be ashamed of. You know, what you're going through, what you're, what you're overcoming, it's something that a lot of people go through. Uh, being a parent, being a mother is a, it's a big challenge. It's a big responsibility, especially one that's still working. Mm-hmm. You know, are you working full-time or part-time? I'm working part-time. But yeah. You're still working. Yeah. You know, you're working and you're raising three kids independently. Yeah. Are their fathers still here? Or? Mm-hmm. So it's just you? Yeah. What's your support base, like your family structure? Do you have family to come in and yeah, help? Or? I have my sister that comes here. Mm-hmm. I have my mom that comes. Yeah, so those are my supports. Was it hard to let the, the family come in when the place was starting to... Um, no, they will actually come in and try to help me clean up, and they right. will clean up, and it will go right back to the same right. way that it was after they cleaned up. And that's the other part of the equation. We can come in, we can do all the things that need to get done. We can address the packing, the sorting, the cleaning, the organizing, getting the laundry done, moving things around, rearranging. But what's important is how to keep it that way. Otherwise, we're going to throw good money and bad money. We're going to waste good effort on poor results. We need you to take the wheel a little bit and to get yourself back involved in the day-to-day routine, taking out the trash, washing the dishes, going to the grocery store. It's easier said than done Mm -hmm. because on one end of the the equation, there's the physical things that need to be done in the maintenance, in the the chores, lighter, heavy chores that you have to do to maintain home. But there's the emotional part of you and the mental part that is at war and you're like trying to stay focused. Like really kids. Yeah. It's like I want to, but mm-hmm. because I'm in this cloud, right. I can't. Like I just couldn't. For people who are watching this that are going through postpartum, what would you tell them are the signs? And then what would you say to them to encourage them to overcome it? Um, when you don't feel like yourself anymore, mm-hmm. when you don't 
things that you took interest in, you don't like them anymore, you don't feel like you will need to do them no more, that's when you should just go out and get help. Don't wait, just go. The sooner you get help, the sooner you can feel like yourself again and you can always work towards being yourself again. I know life is hard sometimes, but with the right things, right people, right team, it all depends on, on uh, that person's will to want to get out of that mood. Mm-hmm. And support, who do you think they should go to, to to really reinforce if there is an issue there? Would you recommend them talking to their doctor, their therapist, their sister? Who, who's that support base for you? Um, that for you? support base for me was talking to my doctor uh-huh. because they're not a family and they will give you the advice from as an outsider, not from, not from the inside. Right. So I will start with them because they were... Um, link you to different resources uh, like I did. I told my doctor, she says, okay, I referred you to a therapist, I referred you to this, that, and uh, that was where it started. How did you find Life Cycle? I was looking for cleaners to clean my house, and they told me that I have to find someone else that specializes in how my house is. So I stumbled upon you guys, um, and I'm like, let me give them a call, like get a quote. And that's where where I started. We're not a cleaning company per se, because a lot of cleaning companies would be a little overwhelmed with a task like this. We're a transition company. What that means in in layman terms is we go into situations when something happens, something's going to happen, and something needs to happen. We go in when conventional measures no longer apply. In this case, our focus is how do we encourage people along physically, mentally, and emotionally. It's not just cleaning things, but it's really doing it intentionally with a purpose behind the the process that measures a sustainable outcome. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you have a therapist in line. You're talking to your support base. You have mentors. You have coaches. That piece is a piece that you're going to have to continue to work at and continue to have that line of communication. This piece, we're going to help you. We'll talk about it over the phone. We're going to come in. We're going to do this. We're going to work with you. We're going to get this process underway. I know from our conversation financially, this process was a, a little bit more for you to, to bear, to consider the fact that you're not working. So we're going to give the process to you. We're going to work, you, work with you. We're going to come in, get the crew here. We're going to do packing. We're going to do sorting. We're going to do organizing. We're going to get these clothes together. We're going to figure out a way to rearrange and decorate the room so that your daughter can come back home in a clean, healthy safe environment but also for every member of the home yeah. your other two daughters mm-hmm. but also you you're the family matriarch yeah. you're taking care of the family and you're the breadwinner mm-hmm. and you're overwhelmed yeah. but i want you to know you represent millions of other individuals that are also going to be watching the show that are going to be listening in and you're going to champion their success because when they see this they hear this they witness this uh, they can make the necessary changes like you did it took a lot of courage it took a lot of confidence for you to sit down with me and share your story with me and tell me what you're going through. We're going to do our part. And we're going to help you along the way. And we're going to get this process underway. And we're going to get it done. Thank you know, you. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I feel like I want to cry right now because mm-hmm. I just felt alone. So nobody in my corner, really. But mm-hmm. I am excited. I'm excited for you. I think you deserve the world. And those three beautiful children you have deserve to be in an environment that's indicative to how mommy would want it to be and has had it many times before over the years that you've been here and mm-hmm. other places that you've had. I mean, you, this isn't your first rodeo. Yeah. You have three kids, yeah. so you know how to keep home, you know how to do these things, but every now and again, we, we stumble, we go through things, and we shouldn't be ashamed to go get help. We shouldn't feel less of ourselves because we need help. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that. My team isn't going to do that. And we're going to get this going. Let's go. Let's get it done.